Maya scaring herself by accidentally turning on the garbage disposal is the most realistic thing in this movie. Hey everybody, welcome to Mainly Movies. Today I'm going to be talking about the 2024 horror film, The Strangers, Chapter 1. If you're new here, please consider subscribing for a variety of movie related content like reviews, rank lists, and trailer reactions. All my reviews include a breakdown of the pros and cons, my rating, and some tailored film recommendations, so be sure to watch through to the end of this video for all of that extra content. The Strangers Chapter 1 stars Madeline Pesch and Froy Gutierrez and was directed by Rennie Harlan. It tells the story of a couple who find themselves terrorized by a group of masked strangers while staying at an isolated Airbnb. I don't say this often, but the existence of this film is puzzling. Not the existence of another movie in the Strangers franchise, but specifically the existence of this movie. The Strangers was a sleeper hit that's gained a cult following, and Prey at Night had its fans and was financially successful, so it makes sense that the studio would want to make more, but the decision to make this movie was weird. This franchise is based on a horror premise that could inevitably be milked forever thanks to its simplicity, but Chapter 1 isn't really another story in the franchise. It's not a sequel, not a prequel. Honestly, it's hard to decipher what it is. A remake? A reboot? A reboot make? Yeah, let's go with that, I guess. Whatever we want to call it, Chapter 1 is, unfortunately, the first part of a trilogy of movies that were filmed concurrently. Almost as if they expected a poor reception and wanted to make sure they got it all on film before it could be cancelled. I know that people like to throw around the phrase cash grab any time an IP gets tapped into, and while I don't always like them, I do tend to defend the existence of sequels, remakes, etc. that other people deem unnecessary. But I've gotta say, at least after just chapter one, I can't do that here. I can't defend the existence of this film, because it's a movie that genuinely serves no purpose. Like I said before, it's hard to pinpoint exactly what this movie is. I guess the best way I can describe it is that this feels like a project from maybe a first semester film school student in which the assignment was to try to recreate The Strangers. It's not a shot for shot identical facsimile, like the infamous Psycho remake for instance. The lead in is a little different, the character dynamics and relationship has shifted slightly, the location is altered, but these are all just superficial changes. The bones of the actual plot are the same. It hits all the same plot beats as the original movie in the same order, to the point of deja vu. Having seen the original movie, I knew exactly what was going to happen before it happened every step of the way. That in itself obviously takes a lot of the suspense out of the equation, but the problem here is deeper than just overfamiliarity. Despite copying the original plot beats, it fails to copy the non-plot elements. The tension, the dread, the creepy realism. Chapter 1 feels like it could be any subpar mid-2000s horror film. It throws in all of the cliches. Outsiders offending small town locals, a cabin in the woods, the protagonists having sex and doing drugs, all these things that are punishable by death in a horror movie. So that's what it feels like, a cliche-ridden horror movie. It loses that original realism, the unsettling randomness of the violence, the chill that came from thinking it could really happen, and that it could really happen to you. When talking about the Strangers franchise, I realized that characters have never been a strong point. In the original movie, Kristen and James felt like mostly believable characters, but each made a series of dumb decisions worthy of audience ridicule. Somehow, the family in Prey at Night was even worse. Individually and together, these characters were unconvincing as real people, and made what appeared to be at the time some of the dumbest horror movie choices possible, seemingly doing things to sabotage their own chances of survival. Well, I'm not exaggerating when I say that the characters in Chapter 1 are somehow even dumber than that. How that's possible, I don't know, but here they are. Any sense of self-preservation is basically non-existent with these people. Their reactions to scenarios that we've seen happen before in the first film are just absurd. You know how there are horror movies that occasionally make you want to yell at the screen, yell at the characters? Well, you would lose your voice if you were to do that with this movie. I mean, it was hard to care about these characters from the beginning, but by the time one of them passes an empty running truck and opts to instead limp off into a foggy forest at night, 
I was done. Perhaps the worst part of all is that you can't even really root for the strangers either, because they make some equally inexplicable decisions. I'll be honest, I can't say that I was looking forward to this film, but I was hopeful. I wanted to like it. I wanted it to be good. I wanted another effective strangers movie. But chapter one just isn't any of those things. I've always been critical of Prey at Night for its stark change in direction and undeserving use of the stranger's name. It was overly derivative of slashers and 80s nostalgia, and yet it's still better than this. Better than what's essentially a remake of the original movie, sans the tension, realism, and all of the other things that made it actually good. This is a film that has very little to offer. Certainly nothing to people who've seen the original, and probably very little to anybody who's seen many other horror movies. Really, the only hope this film has is that chapters 2 and 3 do something to recontextualize it and make it worthwhile as part of a broader story. That seems like a Herculean task to me, and I'm not sure I can even imagine how it would be done, but assuming the next two movies even get distribution, I'll still give them a chance, hopeful that they can somehow do something to justify the existence of this film. Alright, let's talk about the pros and cons. The only pro here, and I use the word lightly and broadly, is the story potential for the sequels. I honestly think it's just morbid curiosity on my part, but I do want to see what they could possibly do in a sequel to differentiate the story or make things worthwhile. Obviously, I'm really grasping for pros here, but I'm just hoping that once we have the full trilogy and the full story, this first chapter will somehow be recontextualized into something okay. On the con side, we definitely don't have a shortage of issues, the biggest of which being the dumb characters. I criticized the character decisions in each of the Strangers movies, and they have been bad in all of them, but I'm not exaggerating when I say that the characters here are some of the dumbest characters I've seen in a modern horror movie. It's just one of those things where the more I think about it, the more examples I remember, the more it irritates me. Logic and sense of self-preservation are at an all-time low here. The number of times these characters drop their weapons to comfort each other out in the open is ridiculous. The amount of noise they make, the number of missed opportunities to escape or kill the strangers. It's a frustrating movie that ensures you don't care about what happens to them at all. Con number two is the script. Obviously, the dumb character decisions and reactions originate from here, but this is basically a dumbed-down and toothless rehash of the original film. It hits all the same plot beats and does nothing interesting with its minor superficial changes. The dialogue's bad, the simplicity of the story is unnecessarily altered, and the whole thing just feels lazy. It's like a kid poorly copying somebody's homework, but then trying to change things to make it sound like they wrote it. Except we're all the teacher who's not fooled for a second. The third con is the lack of tension. Again, the script and this weird remake, reboot, rehash, whatever thing contributes to this issue thanks to the plot's overfamiliarity, but it's more than just knowing what's going to happen before it happens. This movie lacks suspense or build up to the fear. There's never a sense of unknown. We see the strangers a lot, and there's no realism to it. It feels like payback for something, rather than a random, unprovoked act of violence, which removes a lot of the creepiness. There's one short sequence in a crawl space that has a bit of tension, but other than that, this is just a string of unstartling jump scares and boredom. Before I give you my rating recommendations, I want to remind you that if you're interested in buying The Strangers Chapter 1, or any of the other films I mentioned today, I do have affiliate links for all of them in the description below. I get a small commission from anything you buy through one of my links, so I'd really appreciate it if you'd use them, if you're in the market for any of these movies. I'm going to give The Strangers Chapter 1 one and a half out of five paws. Apart from the misguided hope for recontextualization in chapters two and three, this film offers very little that's redeeming. A poor script, awful characters who are even more dumb than their predecessors, and no tension drains everything good about the original film, leaving us with a dull, exsanguinated corpse of a rehash. I would recommend The Strangers Chapter One to almost nobody. I wouldn't go as far as to say I recommend it to these people, but I do think those with very little horror experience will enjoy it more than anyone else. It's rated R for some reason, probably language, but it felt very PG-13 to me. I don't think it's a good gateway horror movie, but it might be able to function as that for some genre newbies. But if you're already a horror fan, and especially if you're already familiar with The Strangers, 
then this is gonna offer next to nothing for you. If you like The Strangers Chapter 1, I would recommend Vacancy. This is another film about a couple stuck in a remote town thanks to car trouble who find themselves attacked by masked intruders. Although their choice of lodging is different, it's an equally poor choice, and the film is plagued with horror movie cliches, but it's got a simple and effective creepy premise. If you want another very mid-2000s feeling horror movie, you might want to check out the remake of House of Wax. It's got the car trouble trope and some very dumb characters, but it does deliver on some pretty gruesome scenes and a good deal of tension. And if you want another horror movie about an Airbnb in Oregon, you should watch The Rental. This one features more characters and a bit more suspenseful build-up to its story. It can be a little bit slow and a little inane, but it's another decent entry in the this feels like it could maybe actually happen horror canon. All right, a couple questions for you guys. Number one, have you seen The Strangers Chapter One? If so, what'd you think of it? And number two, which horror movie do you think features the dumbest characters? Be sure to leave your answers in the comments below so we can get a discussion going. All right, so if you got some enjoyment, insight, or information on this review, I'd appreciate it if you'd hit that like button. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe while you're at it to see more videos like this. Till next time, this has been Alyssa with Mainly Movies. The way life should be.